A lot changes when we talk about climate and energy policy uh, once it is possible to reduce carbon emissions while growing our economy. Uh, this is the chart that um, is, my, uh, is my favorite chart to the, to the degree that my staff has begun to mock me. But I think it's important because if you step back since the Industrial Revolution, it has been a basic tenet of mainstream economics that GDP and carbon emissions grow together. Uh, and that growth had lifted many people out of poverty. It's the basic of, basis of modern societies. It also created a structural reliance on carbon-based energy, system, energy systems. That obviously economically uh, has created problems with respect to climate change, but that perceived linkage between affordable energy on the one hand and carbon uh, on the other has also defined the politics of climate change as well. Um, it's hard to convince people to accept a lower standard of living for anything. Um, uh, it's particularly hard to do so when you're talking about something like climate change that by its nature is diffuse uh, and slow moving. Uh, but as you can see in this chart, that really now has changed. Uh, since 2010, uh, what this shows is that US GDP grew by roughly 11%, while energy sector emissions fell by about 6%. It is economically significant, and a lot of attention has been paid to that point. But I also think it's very politically important, because our success in reducing emissions over the last several years has not been about sacrifice. It has, been, it has not been about trading off prosperity today for some hoped uh, or foreseen future benefit. It's been about innovation, it's been about jobs, and it's been about contributing to what is the longest streak of total job growth on record, which we are living through right now. Uh, and so I think that this period also allows us to say more unambiguously and with more confidence, and not just outside of the core economics profession, that acting on climate change is actually in our best economic interest. It is the best economic strategy for the country. Uh, without action, uh, we face trillions of dollars in costs. When we think about actually measuring appropriately uh, projected GDP growth, those costs should be built into any baseline assessment of growth going forward. And when you do that, uh, taking a low carbon development path is far and away the smartest thing to do. And you can now say, why would we ever take the economic risks associated with climate change when we actually have a strategy where you can grow the economy and reduce emissions at the same time? So where do we go from here? Let me just offer a couple very uh, brief thoughts. First, I think we are all going to have to pay more attention to optimizing and harmonizing a sector-by-sector -sector approach to reducing emissions. It is not the first best, but it uh, merits further scrutiny, it merits further study, it merits further innovation, including by centers like this, because it is likely to be the dominant paradigm for the foreseeable future. That means things like making it easier and more attractive to adopt market-based regulatory approaches, encouraging trading uh, wherever feasible, is something that the EPA is very focused on. It means uh, aligning the implied carbon prices between sectors as the next generation of fuel economy standards, energy efficiency regulations, and power sector reforms uh, are contemplated. It means working more closely as regions, uh, including for us with Canada and Mexico, on regional markets. Uh, and it means improving private sector climate dis disclosure and practices so investors can allocate private capital, capital more efficiently.